Hello everyone. My name is Omar Zoni and I'm a technical specialist with the SO systems focusing on our simulation tools and how they can be leveraged to help companies ensure their products are designed adequately. Today we'll be talking about some of the simulation capabilities that help in the automotive industry. So let's just go over the agenda real quickly. We'll start with some big picture stuff specific to Dassault Systems and how we approach industries. Then we'll talk about our cloud strategy on the 3D Experience platform. We'll discuss the desktop simulation tools inside of SolidWorks, and then we'll show some examples. So I realize the intent here is to discuss the automotive industry. But I wanted to make sure everyone is aware that Dassault has focus on a multitude of different industries, from transportation and mobility all the way through aerospace, high tech, life sciences, and even natural resources. We have dedicated teams that cover each of these industries and stay on top of the trends and unique concerns that they face. If we consider simulation in the automotive industry, that can mean a wide range of things from crash simulations to FEA to cooling, exhaust systems, plastic part design, and expanded capabilities like electromagnetics, system modeling, etc. Here we see a slide that gives us an overview of the types of problems that could be solved in the automotive industry just using a computational fluid dynamics solution. You can see it encompasses a whole host of automotive concerns, from air induction to exhaust to battery cooling, which is becoming more and more important as electric vehicles become more and more mainstream. So I wanna take a minute now and just discuss the simulation landscape at Dassault Systems. Dassault is made up of a whole bunch of brands. For example, SolidWorks is a brand. Uh, I'm sure uh, you guys are all aware of that brand and what it offers. In addition, there is the Inovia brand for PLM, and the Simulia brand is responsible for all of the simulation products that Dassault develops. This chart in particular shows the probably, let's say, the last 20 plus years of simulation type acquisitions. You see the desktop simulation tools, um, the desktop plastic tools that are uh, embedded inside of SolidWorks. Also, um, you know, early on, back in the early 2000s, Dassault acquired Abacus. Abacus is arguably the flagship product inside of the, the Simulia brand. And, you know, the Abacus solver is arguably the most reliable and robust structural finite element analysis solver on the market. So what does that mean for SolidWorks users, right? As SolidWorks is inside, um, you know, the Dassault family. Um, so what, does the, what do these capabilities mean for you guys specifically? Well, if you take a look um, at the kind of the, the, the simulation market, you've got, you know, designers who spend most of their time, uh, you know, in CAD, all the way up through analysts uh, who spend all of their time doing, you know, structure uh, analysis type tasks. If you look at the, the simulation capabilities um, that, that we have to offer uh, with, for a SolidWorks community, the ones here in red are basically the tools that are available on the desktop product. Um, and you can see that goes all the way to simulation premium. Here in blue, we have some new tools. And these new tools are based, that's what we're going to be talking about most of today. Um, these tools are using the Abacus technology, and they're on the 3D Experience platform. So what does that mean? Well, a few years ago, the decision was made to start bringing some of the Simulia capabilities to the SolidWorks market. It only makes sense to have these two amazing brands working more closely together and collaborating. And that's exact, exactly what these tools in blue are. They are collaborative efforts between SolidWorks Simulia and Simulia to make workflows that leverage the SolidWorks data and the Abacus Solver on the 3D Experience platform. And, you know, I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about the 3D Experience platform, but it is a new 
connected, collaborative, and intuitive interface for all of the products that the, the SO is developing. So that will be the interface that, um, you know, future, a lot of the future enhancements will be made uh, on. And again, I, I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about the 3D experience platform. I'm sure there are some other sessions that will hit on this, but it's a very, very powerful and useful system to use. And honestly, I think to our detriment, many of us at SolidWorks have been a bit resistant to using it. But I think, you know, last year and, you know, the early part of this year, um, that's really turned the corner as we're all forced to adjust the way we work. Um, you know, having this platform has helped us work together all over the world, each of us in our homes and across different work functions. And it's just really been amazing, right? And these are just some of the key platform values, right? So, you know, it's uh, it's on the cloud. It's got very easy to use collaborative aspects, um, a unified user experience, uh, very intuitive role packaging. So if you, you know, there are roles specific to these kind of simulation tasks. Um, and it, it you really leverages your SolidWorks data. And the integration between SolidWorks and the 3D Experience platform is just getting more and more powerful, um, you know, at, at every release. So um, it, it's definitely something to be aware of um, and something to take a look at because I really think it can help um, a lot of the ways that we're, we're doing business now. So let's talk about some of the advantages um, and, and things that you can do using the, the desktop products. Um, so I often think that like, you know, arguably the most beneficial thing of having a simulation solution embedded inside of CAD is the ability to do things like this, right? So looking at trends, if you make small changes to a design, you can see um, the in the top right there adding uh, a cutout um, of that part doing a design of experiment where you're really exploring your design space to come up with what the optimal design is. Um, and you, you know, those two basically make changes to your um, geometric parameters, right? So things that define a sketch and extrusion or, you know, uh, some kind of a pattern, making changes to those types of things. Um, in the last couple releases of the software, the desktop tool, um, you guys should have seen the ability to do topology optimization. Um, and this capability is actually something that comes from a, a solution in the Simulia brand. It's a product called Tosca. Um, so you're already seeing some really nice collaboration between the two brands, not just on the 3D experience platform, but also, um, you know, in the desktop uh, tool. So, you know, topology optimization, a very different type of optimization where, you know, you can just start removing material and you really start coming up with some very organic shapes that, you know, historically maybe you wouldn't have been able to manufacture, but with the advances made in, um, you know, 3D printing, um, a lot of these organic shapes are now things that we can relatively easily um, create using 3D printing techniques. Let's now take a look at a workflow leveraging the 3D Experience platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here in SolidWorks. And SFO is just one of the roles available on the platform. It's a product called uh, Structural Mechanics Engineer. So you can see we can, there's a, a nice PLM kind of strategy. We can save our SolidWorks design and then port it over into the platform very seamlessly. So here is the, the SolidWorks model inside the 3D Experience platform. Very nice guided user assistant that can kind of walk us through setting up a structural analysis, right? So I can quickly apply my material properties. We can take a look. the 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 breadth of the and of the materials that are available inside of um, the Simulia tools is really great. Even I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was a some strain fatigue capabilities. So you know the work the the feels a little bit different than setting up a SolidWorks simulation. We first create a finite element representation. We can throw um, a mesh on. There is brick mesh capabilities in this case because of the geometry. It doesn't make sense to generate a brick mesh. Um, so we're going to use a tet mesh, obviously quadratic or linear tets. Um, also, some really advanced element formulations um, are available. So 
setting up our analysis really quickly here. We're going to uh, apply our restraints. You know, it's it, very easy. I feel like if you if you're comfortable running one FEA tool, you're probably going to be comfortable running most of them. Uh, in this case, I'm going to utilize a coupling here to apply my um, remote load. And that load is just going to be applied on the coupling here. It's a 250 pound force uh, in the downward direction. That accurately is going to capture the moment as well as the, the force load. I'm going to go ahead and run this. If you wanted to, you could run it on the cloud. Um, that's another really powerful capability that's available, or you can run it locally. So here we can see the results, um, our stress results um, for this particular design. And uh, a durability analysis is something that has been added uh, quite recently to the, the platform tool. So I'm just going to set up here a, a quick durability simulation. You can see we can take into account um, even the, the kind of the finish of our, uh, of our body here. Uh, just like with SolidWorks simulation, we need to specify the load step the durability analysis is going to be run on. Um, if we wanted to, we could edit the surface finish here. You can see there are some predefined material uh, finishes to, that um, help with our fatigue calculation. And we can go ahead and see um, the, the results. So log of life, that just means 10 to the power of 431, um, which is about 20,400 uh, cycles, is uh, the, the, the lowest um, life cycle there. So. Let's take a look at a separate design. Now, there are some approaches that we could take uh, that, that wouldn't require us to set up a, um, a second simulation. But just to go over this again, we're going to save this. If we wanted to, we could save this as a new revision, as revision B1. Pretty easy to set this up. So instead of creating a B revision, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up just like we did the other um, analysis. See that really nice, well-structured TET mesh my restraints, go ahead and apply my coupling or uh, load to the coupling. And then we can go ahead and run this guy. And here are our results. So here's our von Mises stress. The max is pretty close to the same, but if we look at our uh, durability run, We can see that it, this one actually lasts quite a bit longer, um, I believe. So let's go ahead and run our, our, our case B here. And yeah, so this is now 10 to the five, power of 5.22 um, will be the minimum life cycle. So from about 20, it's about eight times more, uh, eight times as many cycles this one would be able to withstand. There's some really nice uh, compare capabilities. So if you wanted to get a really good comparison of the two and i'm actually wrong but obviously the the stress value would have had to drop it though so it dropped from about 218 megapascals to 181 uh and we can get a feel for the where the 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 you know the our life is going to be an issue um you know that where the the min the the, the cycling is going to be an issue and it's in about the same place for both parts but again um the one on the right lasts about uh what was it uh, eight times longer there's also some uh, nice embedded capabilities. If you just want to like take a look at some results, you don't have to go back into the full simulation package. There's a product called 3D Play that allows you to get some, um, you, know, you know, to just kind of review results. So if you were sending this off to a manager and you just wanted him to uh, be able to kind of review the results but not have to go into the full simulation package, 3D Play is uh, nice for that. So yeah, that's kind of an overview of the 3D Experience platform. Um, you know, those are capabilities that you would have had on the desktop. So let's now take a look at, you know, where, you know, the, the real use cases where I would argue that the Simulia tools really shine. So if you've got kind of low or basic nonlinear uh, um, features in your analysis, SolidWorks Simulation Premium is probably going to be fine. But if you're using SolidWorks Simulation Premium doing really nonlinear studies, ill-conditioned contact, um, you know, really large strain, uh, complex material models, um, you know, it, it starts to hit its limits. So structural performance engineer, structural mechanics engineer using the Abacus solver, you know, with the added um, element formulations, the, you know, brick meshing, the, the more complex material models that are available, um, th that can really be a home run. So 
<laughs> you know, those are some of the use cases or the reasons why you might want to consider switching over to um, one of the, the Simulia based tools on the platform. Let's take a look at uh, one specific example. So this is a foam compression test. Now in SolidWorks Simulia, and, and this is real common, um, this is actually kind of a standard test when people are testing foams. So um, it's 100 millimeters thick, I believe, and they want to compress it about 75%. So with SolidWorks, it took 22 minutes and we can only get to 43% of the solution. With Structural Performance Engineer, in three minutes running locally, um, we were able to get to 100% of the solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup of that problem and kind of uh, dis discuss that a little bit. All right, so you can see here on the, um, in the images, that is a typical um, compression test. Uh, so that's how foam is, is really tested. So here we are inside of SolidWorks. If I take a look at the, the results, again, this is intended to be um, 100, milli 100 millimeter thick foam, and it's gonna supposed to be compressed 75 millimeters, and we really just can't get past about 44%, and it takes about 20 minutes to get there. So I'm going to pull this model into um, the, 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 uh, the, the simu or, uh, structural performance engineer. You can see the toolbar on the bottom, the assistant on the right. Structural scenario creation is the name of the app that we're in. Um, there is a way that a lot of your setup from SolidWorks can actually be pulled over into the 3D experience platform. So the one thing that I do need to define is the material properties for the uh, foam material. So I'm going to go ahead and open the material palette. Uh, there are some really nice predefined material properties uh, that, that, you know, a, a predefined library that you can take advantage of. In this case, I am going to apply this hyper foam material. If we take a look at our simulation data, you can see that it's utilizing um, this hyper foam material model, basically, that's available inside of Simulia. I apply that to my foam material. Uh, one of the really powerful things about using this tool is the way that it handles contact. So we don't have to define um, individual contact pairs. Basically, the solver, there's a general contact setting, and the solver knows that uh, the, the assumption is that the assumption for the general contact is basically a no penetration contact. So you know, gone are the days of having to figure out what faces are going to be coming into contact with one another. And this problem, you know, it's not super complex, but, you know, you could, there are definitely some instances where you're not sure what faces are going to come in contact. Now, by default, it tries to, it applies a tet mesh to all of the bodies um, if you use the automated approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the tet mesh on the bodies that are sweepable here. And I'm going to go ahead and use a sweep 3D mesh, right? So this, again, capabilities that were not available in the SolidWorks uh, desktop product. I can pick that body. The blue face represents kind of the sweep direction. The other side would be purple if we could see it. Put five elements through the thickness. And I can do the same thing for that base, right? So uh, probably don't need five elements through the thickness. Can just put one element through the thickness. And, um, you know, so uh, oftentimes having a nice brick mesh uh, will help with nonlinear convergence. Um, so they're just a little bit easier for the solver oftentimes. I can't sweep mesh that top plunger. So we're going to go ahead and use a tap mesh. Uh, I really don't have to do much else. I can go ahead and, um, you know, run this simulation. I'm going to run it uh, locally again. But again, if you wanted to run it on the cloud, you could. The cloud would take advantage of 1836 or 144 cores very linearized so if it takes you know 16 hours running on one core and you ran it on 16 cores it's going to cut down to running in about an hour uh, the way these solvers are written so we get some data um, about the iterations and the, how this thing is progressing just like you know again most nonlinear solvers kind of behave the same you're going to get you know intermittent results when you're running a nonlinear simulation um, we probably should have changed that in this case. You can see it's trying to apply the full load in the first step, but you can, um, yeah, you can modify that. Now, I, again, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, speeding this up. This is an actual real time, so you can see how quickly this thing runs. It's already well beyond the point of what the desktop solver um, could uh, could achieve. It got to about 75%. It had to cut back. 
Um, but now you can see it's already at about 80%. So 0.813 represents 81% of the final solution because we're running it to a, a pseudo time of one. Um, so these last few steps take a little bit of time, you know, as the, as the foam is really getting compressed. But again, even in real time, you can see that it is a very, very fast solver, even running locally on just, you know, the four cores. And there you go, uh, some 96%. There's some other data that you can get, and it, now it's finished. So it's reached 100% of the solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the results. And again, no need to set up that the, those manual contact pairs. So you can see, you know, the, the foam is lifting off at the back. You can see there there's... Um, some compression between the plunger kind of the, along the sides. It's a pretty complicated model here to be able to run, you know, uh, that's we're able to get a full solution. Let's take a look at some other really more advanced capabilities. Um, so this was actually solved using Abacus. We are um, looking at some of the, the, the results. These results are actually, so again, solved with Abacus, but using um, 3D Excite to actually visualize. And 3D Excite is just kind of a, a, a rendering software. So on the right is the uh, simulation in Abacus. On the left is the actual real simulation. So very, very cool, very, very powerful types of simulations. This is using the Abacus Explicit Solver. Explicit Dynamics is something that we really couldn't do um, in the past. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at some of the, the results for that type of analysis. So uh, I'm just going to say that I want to look at the simulation results. And there are a few different simulations that are available for this particular analysis. Just customizing kind of what we see and just, I mean, just take a look at that, guys. Again, and not having to set up any contact pairs, right? So all of those faces, the tire hitting, the body, um, you know, the body compressing against itself, all of that self-contact, things that we do not have to manually specify. Um, just so, so, so powerful, right, the, the, the types of analyses. Um, here's another really interesting example here. So um, this is a riding mower um, and a, kind of an autonomous riding mower. Um, kind of let's walk through the setup here. I'm pulling this into mechanical scenario. You can see, again, very well-structured brick meshes where um, possible. Um, there's a couple initial velocities. Gravity's turned on, again, utilizing general contact where applicable. Now, if you wanted faces to be bonded together, you could certainly go back and um, uh, tie faces together. So we call them tied instead of bonded contacts, but that would create like the bonded contact that you're used to seeing in the desktop product. And again, a nice kind of crash test simulation. Uh, a really interesting cut plot view so we can see what's going on internally and figure out whether or not that's gonna be problematic. So again, a, a really nice kind of powerful tool. Um, let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with CFD. So, you know, with the desktop simulation, their flow simulation, very powerful general purpose tool. You know, it's got a couple add-ons. Uh, there's a fluid dynamics role now that's on the cloud. So this is one of the products. There's also a couple uh, standalone tools that are very powerful um, CFD offerings. So there's XFlow um, and PowerFlow. Uh, also a product called EXA. So let's take a look at Fluid Dynamics Engineer because that's the one that's on the, the 3D Experience uh, platform. So you know, you can see um, the, the, the setup is, again, the, the, the interface might look a little bit different uh, and there's going to be a little bit of, you know, um, a learning curve. But once you've run one CFD tool, you kind of know how they all behave, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at um, th this example on the 3D Experience platform. So Again, the name of this is Fluid Dynamics Engineer. It's a, uh, a really powerful tool, again, uh, taking advantage of all the things kind of similar to the structural roles. So I am going to go ahead and look at the engine here. Uh, 
Uh, and all those different things are managed on the 3D Experience platform. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the results. And I believe, yeah, we're going to look at actually the, the, the manifold, I believe, here. Oh, sorry, the exhaust system. So um, again, we're going to utilize Fluid Dynamics Engineer. Really simple to, to create an analysis. Again, it's got a nice guided assistant. We can, this is going to be kind of an internal flow problem. So we define the, the regions that kind of uh, are, are our internal bodies. We can specify what's going on at the openings, you know, whether it's a pressure opening. Got a couple of fluid subdomains here. So we're also taking advantage of porosity, right? So in the, 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 uh, we, we have a porous media basically that represents the catalyst. Um, we've got our inlet, our outlet, we're specifying our porous media behavior, the resistance um, in all three directions. Go ahead and throw the mesh. So we, we can use a nice hex dominant brick mesh here and we can go ahead and run this and just yeah, and then take a look at the results right and the type of results that you get from flow simulation are or from this solver are very similar to flow simulation so we can see um you know the direction of the flow take a look at pressures here we're looking at some iso surface pressures uh streamlines take a look at the other exhaust so it looks like this uh, has a right and left exhaust. So it's very simple. Oh, no, I, we're, I guess we're, yeah, so we're modifying the design here. So we can push that to a different revision. You know, take a look at different revision types. And again, once once we're in here, if we switch a revision, it doesn't require us to completely set reset up the problem, right? So it's very easy to look at different um, design iterations and, and get a feel for how those design iterations are going to change um, our results. So here are some other examples of types of things that you can run with CFD analysis. You know, top left, there's a HVAC duct and mixing system, um, you know, thermal design of an engine, uh, the, the electronics, or the powertrain electronics design, um, cooling channels, some really, really cool things that you could do. And again, the, the benefit here, um, you know, there's a lot of similar capabilities that you've got using SolidWorks flow simulation, but the benefit here is really that you're on the cloud, you're on the 3D experience platform, being able to send the, the data. Um, and, I mean, the, the cloud simulation is a really, really powerful thing. The meshing capabilities are great. Um, it's got some more complex uh, turbulence models. So if that's something that you're interested in, that we can definitely take advantage of, of that um, with this particular product. You know, plastic simulation, uh, a lot of these tools are available on the desktop product. They're also available now in a plastics role on the cloud or on the cloud called um, plastic injection uh, designer, I believe, or plastic injection part designer. Um, so if you're interested in, in plastic simulation, looking at things like, you know, like how things are going to fill, how long it's going to take, um, you know, gate location, short shots, sink marks. Um, air traps, all of those types of things are, are things that we can look at um, utilizing simulation. And here are some more advanced uh, kind of plastic injection or plastic simulations that you can do, again, on the cloud or using the, uh, the desktop products. So, you know, plastic parts, very important in automotive design, right? So a lot of the components are injection molded plastic. So, so just in summary, Obviously, simulation is really powerful. This is just kind of a, a small subset of what we can do in the automotive industry. Um, you've got SolidWorks simulation on the desktop and integrated. You've also got now the 3D experience uh, products on the platform, um, you know, taking advantage of the cloud, cloud storage, cloud simulation, the collaborative nature. And, you know, you're using kind of best in class capabilities now, right, with the Abacus solver. Um, and the CFD solver, and you're going to see more and more tools come um, in, in these works products. So um, there's going to be a, an electromagnetics role that's coming out, I believe, in March that's going to be geared towards uh, the SolidWorks community. Um, and it only makes sense to have, you know, the, the largest CAD uh, manufacturer, the largest CAD company in SolidWorks have these advanced, um, you know, simulation capabilities. So you're going to see much more of this really exciting time to be uh, in the simulation space at the SO Systems. Um, 
so if there are any questions, feel free to um, you know shoot me an email, reach out to, to Javelin. Um, you got great resources there, and we're happy to to discuss this with you um, further. So thank you for taking a little bit of time here uh, and, dis and and hearing about what we've got to offer, and definitely looking forward to to engaging with you guys um, if possible. So thanks a lot.